Hey guys, Cam McClellan here. When picking an investment property, most people go out and they go and find the actual property first. What I developed, I wanted to minimise the risk when it came to picking an investment property. I first wanted to maximise my growth. I then wanted to find the right area and finally the property. So I developed a system called MAP, which is Market Area Property. And what it's designed to do is knock out the markets that are not good to invest in that point in time, knock out the non-desirable areas, and then finally when you're left with a good market and a good area, you then go and pick the individual property. That way, in effect, you're picking the best property at any point in time. So, last video we did uh, markets, we looked at um, what markets we don't want to invest in based on a couple of years of population growth. We looked at the amount of uh, titled stock within a market. Um, so we matched the population growth with the amount of title stock, so supply and demand. And then we look at the employment rate, so the consumer confidence in a market. And we're not looking for the best market, we're looking to knock out city markets that we don't want to invest in. Once we've identified one or two city markets that are good for investment at that point in time, we then want to knock out non-desirable areas. So I want to talk to you today about how to identify a good area. So a few things that I look for. Employment generators. Diverse employment generators. People don't always travel to the CBD, so a lot of the cities now have what's called activity centres. And these activity centres have diverse employment, so retail, commercial, industrial. So it's important to have diverse employment in whatever area, or commutable distance to diverse employment. The next thing I think of, and I should, I should say most people go and they pick an area and they look for the amenities, so they look for the basics. Schools, shops, transport, parks, sporting facilities. They're all important things, but to be honest, most areas have those, so they're last on my list. I want to talk about the main important things, so I think it's four important, four key things that I look for in an area. So we've talked about employment generation. The next thing is the amount of supply. So I'm going to do a fantastic diagram here, so we'll, we'll draw Melbourne for you. Uh, there you go, that's Melbourne, CBD. So, if we're looking at, at any city, so we'll take this as Melbourne at this point in time, and we're, we're looking for an area to invest, for example, and it could be any of the areas, what we want to do is look for any available supply of land or supply of stock within the area you're considering and a major employment generator or a CBD. Most people, they only move around 7Ks from their own home. So wherever they're living at that point in time, People generally, if they're moving again, and they, most people move on average every nine years, but most people when they move, they'll move towards the CBD. Everyone seems to want to live a little bit closer to the CBD. That being the case, what I do when I'm looking at a specific area and take into consideration, I draw a line from that individual area I'm looking at in as straight as line as possible to the CBD. So if, for example, I'm looking down here, we'll take any, any area, I'll draw a line the straight line to the CBT. What I then look for on the map and I investigate is any areas or large parcels of land that may bring additional stock to the market which will dampen the growth of my area. So any additional supply that can come into the market in the vicinity where people would prefer to move towards the CBD. So in this area are there Broadacre land subdivisions, now I'm not talking about a dozen units or 50 townhouses, I'm talking about serious amounts of supply, so you know, getting close to a thousand lots of land, um, thousands of you know, apartments going up. So that's probably the second thing I look for. So employment generators, the supply towards the CBD, I'll get rid of this one for you. <sighs> The next thing I look for is owner-occupiers in an area. Wherever I'm moving to, I look for the stats and, and owner-occupiers can be found, and most of these things can be found either on the Australian Bureau of Statistics website, terrible website to navigate, but uh, get on there and get used to it. And the other one, SQM, is a really good website to look at uh, owner-occupiers and vacancy rates. Um, the next one I look for is owner-occupiers. So I like about at least 70% owner-occupiers. Um, getting over that, you don't want the area that you're investing in to become a slum because there's too many investment, too much investment stock in the area. So whatever area, master plan, dwellings you're, you're looking into, make sure the area isn't has an overabundant supply of investor stock. Because if that's the case, what you're going to find is you'll get 
and it, that's rare, but it happens. The cars parked out on the lawn, the long grass, that sort of thing, which will dampen the, you know, the appeal or local community of the area. Uh, vacancy rates is a really important one. So I look at the vacancy rate in an area, and I just match that with the other areas. So there's not a specific vacancy rate that I look for, 3% thereabouts, but I basically match that with all the other areas. So if we look at that, while most people go out and they, the first thing they look for is the amenities, the schools, shops, transport, the parks, sporting facilities, like I mentioned, they first need to be looking at these four things. These are the things that make a desirable area or will allow you to knock out areas that are not good for investment in any capital city. So employment generators, make sure we've got diverse employment. Supply of available stock from the area you're looking at towards the CBD owner occupiers and vacancy rates. And then, once you've done that and you've got an area, then we look at schools. Is there primary, secondary, private, all, all the religious schools? We then look at shops, local, the distance to major shopping facilities, so Westfields, whatever it might be. Transport, has it got diverse transport, rail, bus, uh, parks, sporting facilities. Once you've nailed those things down, you can tick the area as a desirable area. At that point in time, then you can start looking for the property itself. So I hope this has helped you. Check out the last video on how to assess markets. This will help you assess an area, and next time I'll talk to you about how to pick the individual property yourself. Thanks, guys.